today from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens taking on Kenny Pickett and the Pittsburgh Steelers. With Chesapeake Bay gleaming in the distance, we are inside m and Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, it's an AFC North matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. Taking it about the one. So out come the Steelers now for their first drive. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. Harris starts the drive on the ground, and he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Right away, they rack up 10 yards on their first play from scrimmage. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. He's going to rifle one deep left side, and it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Pick it back to throw. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating the defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he is going to have the Steelers first down as they wind up getting 13 there on fourth down. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13 and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. That'll be caught. It's Steven Sims. He's going to have the first down and more than that. Touchdown! Steven Sims Jr. 44 yards. And the Steelers are on the board first on the road here in Baltimore. 
Boy, just zero hesitation from the rookie passer there, partner. He is coming out firing in this opening quarter. And all the talk leading into this game was that pass rush talking about challenging this guy, getting into his grill, getting into his space. And how about him? Might be his first year in the NFL, but I don't see any fear in him at all. How about that big-time throw right out of the gate? Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Ravens offense going to work, and as usual, it's Lamar Jackson, the former MVP of the league, at the helm. Early part of his career, defense has really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now, he's turned himself into a true dual-threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. And he is going to lose yardage here. T.J. Watt, always a disruptor, there to blow that play up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. And Jackson going to hold on to it again. And maybe Shane's in the steel curtain here as the Steeler defense drops him behind the line again. Third and 15 coming up after that loss of two. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And here is a leaping catch. He pulled it in. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the option is Jackson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. Here's Jackson on third and long. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Jackson now, yet again, targeting and fighting Mark Andrews. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Jackson from the shotgun. That's good. Oh, caught it up. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And the return out shy of midfield to the 46-yard line. This drive didn't end well, but if they can keep stringing these together, they'll like what they're doing. That was an eight-play drive before it ended in a fumble. So the takeaway's got to be doing what we want to do and doing it well. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. To throw again is Jackson. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. So the completion good for seven there. And that's going to bring up second down. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Throwing again on second down. Jackson. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one. And it's third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play. And that leads us to a third and three. Now it's Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. And oh, he's just going to be short here. Barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. 
few inches, and they didn't get much more than that, but by about the width of a shoelace, they convert on fourth down. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Well, they've been back on the heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. On third down, Jackson. And that'll be caught by the big tight end, Andrews. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. That's good, the completion there for seven yards. And it'll be fourth down. Needing the tough yard to run it with her fullback. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. So this offense able to convert on fourth. And now a fresh set of downs here, first and 10. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Gus Edwards, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Ravens are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Here's Steven Sims on the return from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. The game before that time as the drive continues. But we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit. But how about guys who are maulers? Because that's who you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical downhill running. Pickett sets up play action. He's got his tight end, Fryermuth, right side. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. A really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him and I think we saw that this week didn't we talking to him and the coaches they felt good about his performance coming up yeah I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two minute drill when they went through all the different situations that hardly hit the ground and thought, yeah he might be locked in for this one again it's Harris on second down and some good tackling there as he stopped it up at about the 41 three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. 44 yards now on the ground. Just seven carries. We all love that home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage trying to pick up first downs. That big guy. Always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? First and ten, it's Pickett. Open man here, Sims complete. And he's 
brought down here just outside of the 20. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 7-7, seven, seven, our score after one. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, helped force the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now pick it. It's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're taking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get out for one more time. And that is incomplete. But the pressure there on third down, forcing the errant pass. Fourth down coming up. Boswell's kick is good. And they take the lead here now. 10 to 7. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks can tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. Baltimore offense at the line, set to get going. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Jackson running again. Good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. A good chunk on the ground and the keeper, 17 yards, first down. They'll go option to the short side. He'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Six yards there on the keeper at second down. Do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. And he takes it down to 40 with a pickup of four. Typically, I think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety? coming up and making the big time play. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Call it a game of seven and it gets him a new set of downs. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They'll go again with Dobbins. Oh, good move. There on the tackle, Mika Fitzpatrick. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front they just engaged and held their ground but how about the guy who made the play we often talk about whether they take a good first step or not many times you just don't take any step just get your feet moving get your body going and then once he made the read he was able to make the play Brandon all things considered they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them Throwing is Jackson. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. And he will have a Ravens first down. He needed five. He got it barely as it will officially go down as a gain of five yards. Jackson. And incomplete. 
what would look like a march to the end zone is hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. They go back to the ground with Dobbins. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. They're backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. From the gun on third down, Jackson. Being chased out, Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers, and they will take over at the 29-yard line. Well, that's a down and distance coaches always talk about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long, and you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him, sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. Pickett leads his Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. Just shy of the 30. Pickett in trouble, and down he goes. Second and 14 as they've got work to do here after the sack. Harris running straight ahead. 63 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first down. Well executed there on second down, so do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility, but now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. No game there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a group effort to get a guy like that down and not let him find some space. The first guy in, he's got to take one for the team, right? Because he's just waiting there and holding on for everyone else to help him out. Fourth down conversion plays, you usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. So on fourth down, a big time completion. And the defense, they've got to be shaking their heads right now. Not only shaking their heads, but understand that they committed one of those cardinal sins that they say they can't do at any time. They committed an eye violation. Had their eyes in one place and allowed the deep ball behind them. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 27, pick it. He gets this one to Johnson. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on it. And they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. One yard is the gain, and it'll give the Steelers a first down. To the air on first down with Pickett. Finds Pickens out right. And in for the Steelers, touchdown. George Pickens from 21 yards away. And they are able to add on to their advantage. All the receivers in the league are plenty good enough, otherwise they wouldn't make it in the NFL. But the ones that go to the Pro Bowl, they have refined route running ability. Extra point put through by Boswell, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards. And it was finished off by a George Pickens touchdown grab. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points to Charles, but they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch, partner, for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. 
Allen, a gain of three on the play. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Jackson sliding out of the pocket. And Jackson going to have the first down as he will get to the ground to avoid the contact. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Certainly not a positive sign if you're the D coordinator and you see your guys give up that space so early in the game. Third down, that's when the clamps are supposed to come out. But his ability to create things with his legs makes things difficult. First and ten, it's Dobbins. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. From midfield now, here's Jackson. He'll swing this out to Dobbins. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The Ravens on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This time they face a third and two. Play action. Now Jackson. Right side. There's Lakeley with it. And he will have a Ravens first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short. Blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. And he is going to lose yardage here. Devin Bush sprinting behind the line to track down the ball carrier. So maybe just a momentary setback on what's been a great drive so far, but second and 13 here. They'll try to draw here with Dobbins. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Now it's Jackson. Forced out to his left. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. They converted twice on third down that drive already but couldn't make it a third. We always talk about in-game adjustments. How about what the defense did there, able to shut them down on that attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And they're back within a touchdown at 17-10. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny, when we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. He's put up numbers in this one by pushing the envelope a bit whenever he could with deeper throws. But let's play a little philosophy here. Some plays it works, sometimes they're ready for you. And that time, they were on guard. Incomplete. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. After the interception, here's Jackson. Finds his man over the middle, it's likely. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, they set up the screen for Dobbins. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Now the Ravens gonna use one of their timeouts. They'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Now Jackson. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. 
played. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. James Crochet from eight yards out. And the Ravens are an extra point away from tying the ball. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Tucker with the extra point, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. Just a four-play drive that time. 17-17 the score, all even to this point as the kick's away. Here's Sims now from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to play, they may be looking to pick up some yardage here, maybe try and come up with a field goal to seize the lead before intermission. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw here taken in by Boykin. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. A good down to possibly take a shot. And in fact, they'll come up with an empty backfield on second and inches. Back to throw, pick it. It's brought in by Harris. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Pick it now on first down. And going deep downfield for Boykin. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. So a costly penalty yardage-wise as that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball, and if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the it's less likely to draw the flag. Another nice gain, 16 yards there at a first down again. Final play of the first half. Here's Pickett. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. So nothing separating these two teams as we head to the break all square. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. Hill going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? It's a loss of four. Now third down. Here's Jackson to throw. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. 
And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Jackson options out left. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, he's had success from the football in this one. Yeah, that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. And, partner, I think the more you see him play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw pulled in by Robinson here. And he'll go out of bounds. It appears right at the 45. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. From the gun, Jackson. And that is incomplete. So a stop here defensively to start this third quarter. Just what's needed in a tie ball game. Yeah, good chance to build back some momentum on the defensive side of the ball. In fact, what they've done is give their offense a nice push in the back as they get ready to take the field. Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard at them because the defense right now, they see it's get step to hit, don't they? Beating them to the open attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are screaming like crazy. What did it take to get back on the track? And both sides searching for adjustments. Sometimes a lot has been power running. It's inside 
opportunity to get, get on third down, didn't they? They did indeed, and they delivered the tough yards. First and ten, here's the kick. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a rough one. So, a rough in the pass right here. Still got to do it within the scope of the rules, and that time it came just a little bit too late. And they're going to build a way big twice. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, lay it with the wind belt, find a way to hold your defense, and give it your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen. Jack with a big time hustle play there as he backs the offense up. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. On second and 12, Jackson and looking for Andrews, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. He's at the 40, 20, 10, 5, and he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. So what a turn of events there. You're driving to take the lead in this third quarter, but then one mistake, and you're watching the ball being returned for a touchdown. Certainly a great example of how focus has to be there on every play, doesn't it, partner? You can't get complacent, and I think that he did. He's got him moving downfield, but that's a play where he just shouldn't have thrown the football, and that ultimately could wind up costing him the ball game. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And Hill will act for the touchback. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, you had your fun? All right, throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. And he'll go right back to Andrews. And they get him down, but not before he 
and takes it across the 40-yard line. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And he is going to lose yardage here. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Jackson now. That's taken in by Duvernay. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And this will wind up being a third and three. Looking to throw. Jackson. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And yeah, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. Looking to throw, pick it. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Again, it's Johnson. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. The picket finding Johnson there, first down, Steelers. On the give, this is Harris. This is stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. And he's got his big tight end here. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They hand this off to Harris. And he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards. Second down coming up. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. He finds his man, Johnson. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. This is Harris, and he'll power ahead, but only for about three yards, second down coming up. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Harris is going backwards as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Williams getting the sack 
from the secondary. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that, and this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Well, we're going to think better bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And the complexion of this one has changed a fair amount. That last field goal made it a two-score game, so they need to get points out of this drive relatively quickly. And Jackson so tough to stop. He's got a first down, and he gives himself up there at the end. They'll set up to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Robinson. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. The play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against the front. That's prepared for him to try and take off. To throw again on second down. Jackson. That would complete to Prochet. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 30. Now it's Jackson. Open man is Duvernay. And he'll be brought down at the 27. The goal of a wide receiver screen is getting up blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Oh, and for the third time, Jackson going to be intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Miles Jack. There he goes, left side. Oh, boy, he ain't got no feet. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Well, this defense just continuing to do their thing, and now they add on to that lead with another pick six. And how about the way they've played this entire game? Not only have they put their stamp on it, but every time they try and mount an offensive challenge, they find a way to thwart it. And multiple pick sixes? Oh, yeah, they'll enjoy watching this tape after the game. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. He'll going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But they trim that lead down to just two scores. That's still a benefit to this squad. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're going to have this.
themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 34-yard line. To throw again is Jackson. And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. This has obviously been a bad loss, but one of the few things they can still do is try and throw the ball all the way to the end zone and get some points on the board so they're not shut out over the final two quarters of this game. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 13-yard line. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Jackson, option right. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. And Jackson going to run again. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Back to throw. Jackson. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to make it fourth down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, got a man, it's caught. For a Ravens touchdown. Devin Duvernay, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So that one a long 11-play drive. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this doesn't work. The Steelers recover it. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On first and 10, it's Pickett. He finds his tight end, Gentry. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. And they'll bring it down at the 13-yard line. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18-yard line. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. On the ground, it's Harris. And he'll go down here the 12-yard line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Now here's another carry for Harris. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So 
they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Now, after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. Jackson. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Here we go, it's Jackson on fourth down. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Arthur Mowlett. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Little choice, Charles, but to go for it right there, and that pick six will be the icing on the cake. Yeah, you don't know how many more possessions you're going to get, so really, you're almost at the point of no option. Have to go for it. Bottom line, though, is Defenders know that as well. They know you've got to throw the football. Had the right defense call, it would make a nice play on the ball. And that's all she wrote. Boswell good with the extra point. And that pushes the lead up to an even 20. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Throwing is Jackson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But it looked like a Raven was able to get in there, and they will indeed keep the possession. Throwing on second and long. Jackson under pressure. They got him again. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And now here is another interception. Levi Wallace with a pick. And the Steelers are going to take possession of the football. I think you and I were a little surprised back earlier in the game when he threw his second interception. I mean, who would have thought a quarterback of his caliber picked now five times? It's beyond stunning to me because we're used to that with maybe a quarterback with less experience or less talent. A quarterback of his caliber? I can't believe what we've just seen. Absolutely. If you would have told me this coming into the ball game, I would have said never, not in a million years, but here we go. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. But Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish.
So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Baltimore, so long, everybody. Tonight, from Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Indianapolis Colts taking on Davis Mills and the Houston Texans. These folks in the Circle City, they love their Colts and they have packed the house tonight as we welcome you to Lucas Oil Stadium in downtown Indianapolis. Straight ahead, we've got a good one on tap here between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. Here's the former UCLA Bruin, Kaimi Fairbairn, to get this one started. And we are underway from Indianapolis. Fields it right around the goal line. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. A carry by Taylor to start the drive. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Hits his target to tight end Mo Alley Cox. And they're going to get this to about the 44 yard line. Ran a perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is. And they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. On second down, it's Taylor. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. 
It's a jet sweep. This is to Ipnip. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Yeah, it holds 13 yards and a first down. Well, I sure wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this as this game goes on because we know they like to use their wideouts either on quick throws or on jet sweeps like what we just saw there. And to say that that would work well, partner, that's stating the obvious. Calling a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Now on second and 13, Foles. This was complete to Alec Pierce. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. Eight play in this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Foles. Open man is Taylor. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 15-yard line. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Line of scrimmage, the 15 is first and 10. Running straight ahead, Taylor looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again, second and 10. Now Foles. That one finds Pierce right side. And he'll reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Touchdown, Colts! Mo Cox, a five-yard touchdown. And the Colts will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here. No going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead, put it on him, and score a touchdown. Extra point by McLaughlin is nothing good. And it's now a 7 0 game. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Smith chooses not to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. Leading him out, the former Stanford man. At quarterback, it's Davis Mills. And remember, when he came out of college, he left early. So a lot of people weren't really paying attention to this young man. He was entrusted with a leadership role early in his NFL career and didn't shy away from it. His goal, continue to prove that there should have been one more quarterback that went in the first round of the 2021 draft. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. On second and nine, Mills. And that'd be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm. Isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback? But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Mills to throw it. He'll get this one out to Rex Burkhead. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Colts will go on offense here. First and 10. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. And the drive starts with a completion left side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A gain of 11 to 
kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. They'll look to throw here. Now that's into the hands of Mo Allen Cox, the tight end. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And a good run here. It's a double all the way down to the 40 yard line. A 14 yard game for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. So it's first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. throw caught by Pierce and he gets this to the 35 good for a gain of five second and five now a handoff Taylor with it and he'll look it inside the, to the 29 yard line six yards the pick up and that's a first down they're going to look to throw And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him. Put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and the new set of downs. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Now what a first down pick up of eight. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out of here and take off. It's a jet sweep. This is Pittman. And he'll get into the end zone. And touchdown, Indianapolis. Michael Pittman, a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Colts lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Another impressive drive. So they're two for two, two touchdowns. Charles, a great start to this ball game for them. And one of the words that's really worked its way into the lexicon is stacking. They've stacked momentum each time out, and not only on offense. Between those touchdowns, defense held, forced a punt to get the ball back, and they played all through the ball in this one. Both sides handed off the ball. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good, and it's now 14 to nothing. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. A first down throw for Mills. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Let's face it, you want to get back to the game. These are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him. Don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. <laughs> Opening carry of the game here for Rex Burkhead. And they will only muster a yard here at the 38. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Moore. 
And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Mills. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Play action now. Mills. And incomplete on the deep ball. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full ten yards on third down. Mills to the air again. Sports. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the third catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. that will be a 39-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. with Taylor to begin the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. On second and seven, Foles over the middle, hauled in by Campbell. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being fouled. 19 yards to pick up there. Change. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. On first down, he'll drop the throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll set up a throw. That's complete to Pierce. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. with a passing game as he looks to throw. And they're able to work this across the field to the 48. But nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD. He got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. One of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their own For six as they keep this drive right on rolling. They'll look to throw now on first down. Oh, into a sea of defenders had intercepted. And the Texans are going to take over once again at their own 25 yard line. Boy, that's the kind of interception that can save a game right there. They're already down two scores. Huge play, slowing down what was going against them. I was thinking the same thing. You get down three scores there at this stage, could be in for a long ball game. They're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Fourth 
taken out of the gun. Mills. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Higgins. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Here's now up the middle. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. One advantage having a lead guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. From the 38, Mills. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Faison. And the Colts are going to take over at their own 30-yard line. The one side gets an interception, but their defense comes on the field and picks him right back up by getting a pick of their own. And I think you saw the same thing that I did, Brandon. As he ran it, it's close inside the 35. on third down tonight just one for three thus far here it's third and two off the play fake mill it'll buy some time right Mills can't get away and down he goes quitty pay drops him for a loss of 14 yards and it also brings up fourth down so now on comes the field goal unit and wow this is no ordinary try here and did he have enough? He did. He kept it on line and managed to tuck it into the bottom right corner. And the deficit drops now from 21 down to 18. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he's got right now. Exactly what they needed. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. 
Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. It's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do, and you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. That was awfully nice. Hit him in stride, and off he went. It was almost like the ball hitting him was like him receiving a baton, and he was running the anchor leg in a relay race. First and 10, Taylor now. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay. I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Only a yard there on the keeper, but that's all he needed. First down. I don't know about you, but I like this call third and inches and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front just go ahead and take it move forward and pick up the first down and as we say often shows confidence in your offensive line he's got his man it's Pierce and he's tackled a yard short of the marker good gain of nine on first down Ball resting on the 10-yard line. It's second and one. Foles going to keep it himself. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the sneak. Kind of a wasted play there. And now it's third down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Now that was a little too conservative for my liking. It's only second down, and they try to run the sneak. Give credit to the defense. They pushed him back and set up third down. On third and short, going with their tight end. Give him a gain of four, able to convert, and that sets up first and goal now. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. They go play action here on first down. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. On the handoff, this is Taylor. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Colts continue to pull away here in this first half. McLaughlin for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was capped off by a Jonathan Taylor touchdown. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice the two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Mills now looks to throw on first down. Now pass complete to Moore. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, Mills. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Sacks, a growing theme in this first. This is second and long. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. 
And the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Play fake, Mills. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead is down to 28-10. So that drive spanned five plays. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And with a three-score lead already, this is not time for a momentum change, so I'd imagine they'd be happy to just take this into the locker room. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. The secondary has been roasted in this first half, and they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. And he'll push forward here for a good little run as the clock continues to run. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. And how about this right out of the locker room? An onside kick attempt. Snuffed out. The Texans' hands team recovers. No, they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Out of the shotgun, a give to Burkhead. And he swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. DeForest Buckner in on the tackle. Looking to throw on second down. Mills over the middle complete. That's more. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. On the carry, this is Pierce. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Try to pick it up on the ground with Burkhead. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Mills to the sideline, and out now is Kaimi Fairbairn for the Houston field goal try. The left half should be a fairly easy one here. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that'll get the deficit down to 15. So that may be not exactly what they were hoping for, but it does get them back with a couple of scores. And at this point in the third quarter, 
you don't have much margin for error, and that means you can't have drives that end with nothing. Whether it's a punt, a turnover, a turnover on downs, those have to go away. You have to end with a kick, either a field goal or an extra point after a touchdown. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And they will score a pick six for the Texans TD. Boy, a big play right there. I mean, a touchdown on this drive could have really put some separation on the scoreboard. Instead, it's the defense who scores. And partner, we got a game again. And we do have one because of what you just described. A defense that understood what was going on in this game and did something about it. They knew their offense needed some help. They just provided it. They're back in this one. Taken at the goal line. And it's going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And he's set to go on offense once more. And remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. And sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. They'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop, but when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. He's got a man complete. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. But I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. On the handoff, Taylor. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And the Texans scoop it. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. I know a lot of defensive coaches have certain guys on their squad that they look to as drive stoppers. Guys who can make big plays, interceptions, knock it from under pressure. And down he goes in the end zone. And that's a safety. So troubles here offensively. I tell you, the noise in this dome, that has got to make it harder for these guys to hear. Sometimes I find myself shouting up here. But you're right. If you can't communicate well and get off the snap count properly, it can cause big problems, and this qualifies as a big problem. The Indy offense at the line and set to go. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because it really how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field and to come away with nothing that's difficult for a team to handle Very difficult and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive Bulls throw into the hands of Pittman here and they'll take him down at the 31 yard line he's now just three yards shy of 197 yards receiving on the contest and a first down now we give to Taylor and yeah, not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains. That means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what... And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. And now they're in the hurry up. On third down, he'll drop. Now a leaping catch, he's got it. 
And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 41-yard line. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 24-yard line. 23 yards the pick up there. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. They'll look to throw. He's got Branson over the middle. And he is going to have a coach first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. They run once more with Taylor. And he'll get it into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor with his second touchdown of the night. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And Smith chooses not to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Texans offense set to regain possession. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. On second and 11 now, Mills. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. Third and seven now. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. On third down, here's Mills. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Faison. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores. But, yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. A really nice gain of 25 yards. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Paris Campbell, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead is now 24. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Yeah. 
And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Well, it's a game that they would rather probably forget about, at least to this point, Charles. And one reason is turnover is a turnover. And Mills is intercepted for the third time. Picked off by Rodney McLeod. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. And Charles, for this offense, those interception woes they kind of had in the first half have now followed them into the second half. And for this defense, they take advantage, turn that into a pick six. And that defense is in a spot now where they're thinking about ways to close this game out. As confidently as they've been playing, I expect them to do exactly that. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Smith chooses not to return it, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD, and if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are right, you saying that you feel like people are getting out of here and maybe beating the truck? Second and seven. Mills throw right side, taken in by Collins. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Looking to throw is Mills. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. On the return, it's Rodgers. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. Well, they got to be thrilled with how they've operated so far in this one. They've got the nice lead, and now a chance to score here on three straight possessions. Yeah, and the way that they are rolling, I just don't know how they get slowed down because they certainly are operating at peak efficiency right now. They might want to think about giving some of their backups a little bit of work, though. Let some other guys get on the field and do their thing and save some of this for the next time out. Now a throw here, hauled in. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. It looked like they had the run stopped at the line of scrimmage, but the hand got up into the face mask, and the officials, they were looking for it. They spotted it. It's an easy call, too, when it's right in front of them. You see that neck twist just a little bit, and that's enough to draw the flag. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. The partner is still in the third quarter, but they've got this one well in hand and still airing it out with gusto and picking up some nice gains. And even in lopsided games like this, you don't really see starters get lifted or the foot come off the gas before the fourth quarter. No one wants to leave any doubt when they're playing well. They just want to continue the process. To throw on second and ten. Foles. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The offense schemed going five wide, trying to create a chance for the big shot, and they took it. If he comes down with that one, that's a huge offensive swing. But credit the defense with a nice play, knocking that one away. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So look at this. Here's the field goal unit coming out. And he is going to need to bomb this one. They spot it on the midfield stripe. So it is a 
60-yard attempt here. And this is good. He got just enough to clear the crossbar as he drops it in from long distance. And that will extend their lead even further. Charles, even as long field goals become more and more common, this is still very rarefied air. Only just over 20 field goals have been kicked from 60 yards or further, and you can add his name to the list now. And as calm as he tried to present himself, there's no doubt there were some nerves as he lined up to attempt that kick. But once the ball was snapped, he just swept the leg and boom, over the crossbar. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. That play was all Bobby Okereke as he got there and dragged him down for the loss. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. At the 23, it's second and 12. Throwing, Mills. It's caught left side by Cooks. And they're able to get this one across the 35. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Mills. That's complete. It's Collins. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. To throw Mills. And that's complete to Cooks. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. Now Mills. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. And that one almost intercepted. Could have been his third pick of the game. Instead, it's going to bring up a third down. Mills again. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Yeah, yeah, we, don't we can make this one pretty simple. Blocked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down to force a fourth down? And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Bobby Okereke. The 20. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. Well, what has been a fantastic game for this defense has been rough for this offense. And certainly a signal caller, Charles, that's thrown all these interceptions. Another one there, and this one taken all the way back for the score. Partner hoping to hold a nice little spot in the postgame highlights to show this rip of interceptions and great plays this group has made. They've been on it from snap one. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Looking to throw. Mills. Got his man complete over the middle. That's more. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Mills on first down. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. 
And he'll throw again. Here's Mills. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will bring it back. An interception return for a Colts TD. Well, this one was already ugly, and now it's just kind of becoming a feast on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, partner, this is a unit that knows they've got this game in the bag with this huge lead. And it's going to drive their coaches crazy because they're telling them, play it straight, do all the right things. But these guys are going to be free wheeling now. All of them are going to take chances, and that one pays off with an INT and a return for six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And Smith chooses not to return, and they'll bring it out to the 25. The Texans' offense ready to go here for their next drive. Well, we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And, partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Mills to throw it. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. First down, Mills. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Second and 10 now from the 27. Again, it's Mills. They dial up the screen here to Burkhead. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. The Texans on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 11. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Here's Pierce. Going to take this down just short of the goal line. He got three, but could not get the ball over the chalk. Second and goal from the one. Again, it's Pierce, but he will not get to the goal line. In fact, he won't get to the line of scrimmage as they push him back to the two. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Burkhead. What a stand so far defensively, and now that's going to bring up a fourth and goal. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Damian Pierce taking it in from two yards out. And the Texans get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. Fairbairn good with the extra point as they make the score just a slight bit more respectable here in the final quarter of play. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Colts getting another possession here on offense. We paid this offense plenty of compliments already, but I mean, they are deserving as they start another series to be leading by this much with so much time left to play in the fourth. 
Charles, it's really, really been impressive to watch. It has been, and you have to think to yourself, the preparation that went into this, but the absolute focus that they kept throughout in order to have this kind of a result, this is Super Bowl-esque, and they've got to feel awfully good about what they put out there today. 92 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's going on. The last run got six, now second and four. Now Foles. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Foles. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and the Texans will take over. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. A first down throw for Mills. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Mills throw taken in there by Cooks. And he goes out of bounds and looks like right at the 50. Mills now from the 50. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. Now, the previous drive they punted, but that was just the first time they've had to do so in this game. And when they turn on the game film, the coaches will rant about this, right? They'll say, oh, God, we got to move the ball, guys. We can't punt the ball away. But they have to keep smiles off their faces because that's the first time in the game they've had to do so. They've moved it quite well. They'll overall be happy with what they've seen. Partner in the sportsmanship handbook, there's something to be said for calling the dogs off in a blowout. But these defenders, they also know this is the NFL, and it's their job to stop them, whether they're in the game or they're down by a handful of touchdowns. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where there'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and ten. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. Mills, see if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He'd love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. To throw once more on second and ten. Mills. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. 
And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. Mills to the air again. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's going to have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. Mills can't get away, and down he goes. DeForest Buckner, his second sack of the night. Talk about two sides of the ball across purposes because mercifully this game's almost over for the offense, but the defense, they still want to get a few shots in. That front seven, they've loved this ball game. They've been able to pad their stats, and maybe some backups can get in and get a sack as well. And now here's another interception. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And the Colts are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. Well, partner, I, I got to tell you, I'm trying to think of something positive to say for this offense, but I'd have to be a spin doctor for that one. This has been a tough performance to watch. And I think it's hard at this point to actually identify what's really gone wrong. I guess the catch-all is everything. Doesn't sound like real sharp analysis, but I don't have much else for you. And the scoreboard just lopsided, and it's been ugly from the get-go. And they will take a knee here. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Here's Foles. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. To throw again, Mills. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Give him 17 on the pick up there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. football there and it's second down here's second and ten now from about the 32 again he'll drop to throw and he's going to be taken down pressure gets there back at the 39 yard line now on third and long they'll look to throw he's letting it fly for cooks and that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete so now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And they will remain well, well behind. And anytime you see a kicker trot out to try one for 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through. And that one winds up no good. He's got the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And he'll get this down to the 42-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. And they're able to stop it here on the spike with three seconds remaining.
So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, fans usually love to see scoring, and there was no shortage of it today. What a dominant showing from an offense that was truly playing at an elite level in this contest. Partner, this game was over a long time ago, and you noticed they did not want to slow down anything. Absolutely a dream scenario for everyone on that offense, and they took advantage of every second. Guaranteed popcorn for everyone in their film session. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.